about books. I'm Nate. <clears throat> You're Ben. How's that? Does that does that pump you up? Fill you with energy. American Gods is a novel by British author Neil Gaiman. <laughs> the novel is a blend of Americana fantasy and various strands of ancient and modern mythology, all centering on the mysterious and taciturn shadow. The book was published in 2001 by Headline in the United Kingdom. And while I was editing the first episode, two more women came out claiming Ooh. that Neil Gaiman oh. had an inappropriate <laughs> relationship with him. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I have some corrections and some interesting things on on the first uh, episode. So uh, I mentioned in the first episode that Neil Gaiman was married and in an open marriage. Well, let's put the emphasis on was. <laughs> okay, that's fair. He is no longer. He was at the time that uh, these the, the incidents were alleged to have happened. Um, and the second, um, I had to do a little double checking of the sources because I found out some things about that, that podcast I mentioned at first, I think it was published. Uh, so I noticed something weird. I should have looked more into it before we recorded, but my spider senses were tingling, uh, only about Neil Gaiman and not perhaps about the mysterious podcast that also deserves a little attention. So it was originally published by something called like tortoise media. And then I saw it all re-uploaded under the slow newscast. So one of the co-hosts of that newscast is Boris Johnson's sister. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So that leads you naturally to question a lot of it. However, I double checked. So now they say, they got a response from Neil Gaiman. And I think a lot of people rightly pointed out, like, why would Neil Gaiman answer this random podcast? But Neil Gaiman apparently did post a um, response in the Telegraph, which I think is also a conservative-ish newspaper. And he published that. He said that, like, all the relationships were were consensual. So he, he still acknowledges that they happened, which is... My problem. I think that was the main problem we, fo- yeah, we focused on. Yeah, still still weird, yeah. Neil. Yeah, and and anything else that's like, I, I mean, anything else that comes out of it with the other stuff is, we'll see. We'll see where all that goes. I, I definitely think it, it needs the attention of perhaps a better outlet than uh, Boris Johnson's sister's pet news thing. But uh, yeah, so the relationship still happened. I just wanted to, do a, to to get some of that out there. The latest allegation is that there was a, a woman stained in his house and the, the wife at the time wanted the house back or something. And uh, he was like, well, you know, maybe if you do stuff, I won't kick you out. So that's an interesting allegation. When we last left off, <laughs> Shadow, <laughs> I don't even remember where we last left off, Nate. We left off... <clears throat> At the end of part one, Ben, we kidnapped and beat him. And then his his dead ex-wife, or no, I guess his dead, well, you know, I guess she is kind of an ex-wife now that she's dead. She came in and murdered a bunch of people, and then he walked to Cairo. Walked and drove to Cairo, Iowa, or whatever. Whatever. It's all part of the Midwest. I'm also told it's pronounced Cairo. I don't care. Uh, I thought that was just a a weird raven thing in the book, but that's apparently how the good people of Illinois pronounce Cairo. Well, you're wrong. So it's Cairo. You know, I thought about I, I actually thought about saying that that like, well, you know, I, I would feel like I'm just mocking their accent if I pronounced it Cairo. But then I thought like, I have no idea how people in Egypt say Cairo. So I probably sound just as dumb. And I didn't make that joke. I took the high road. I will do no such thing. Then uh, Leprechaun dies, and Odin shows back up and is like, hey, man, go, you know what you need to do? You need to fuck around a bit in another town. (laughs) So you're, so, so once again, I am, I am struggling, Ben. Okay, I have not finished the book still. I finished to the end of part two, which is what we're talking about today. So... 
I have not struggled this much in a very long time. And you mentioned that you're going to be out of town. So we had to record this episode today. And I was in the middle of reading the hot, not the Hobbit, the fellowship of the ring. And I was like, you know what? I'm still going to finish this chapter. I'm not going to put this down. (laughs) So you knew you had a deadline and you still just chose to ignore it and read fellowship of the ring. The most boring of the Lord of the Rings books. It's a chapter where Gandalf and Frodo are just talking to each other and like there's no action going on. And I was so much more engrossed by that than anything that this book is doing. Do you want to know why? And yes, please enlighten. Because Gandalf told Frodo, hey, man, you have this magical ring. It's the one ring of the Dark Lord. And we're going to have to do something about that. And he didn't say a bunch of vague but pretty nonsense. <laughs> and then nothing happened. Like he he actually gave Frodo interesting information instead of just hinting that there were interesting things in the world, but they're vague and ill-defined. And yeah, I, look, I'm going to be real with you, dude. Um, <laughs> I've been talking to a lot of people about this. I've been, because I, I said in the first episode that I'm trying not to make this, you know, just a thing where we're, we're taking advantage of the publicity of a scandal. You know, I, that's scummy to me. I, I want this to actually be about the book and about reading something after you learn something about the author that, that sort of makes you question if you should still like it. And in the spirit of that, I've been thinking a lot. I've been thinking a lot about the comments I got on the original um, thread I posted. I've been thinking about conversations I've had with other friends who read this book. We talked a little bit in the words about books discord. And the one thing that I thought was kind of just me was I think I read this book in 2016. Oh my God. It was 2015 or 2016 because I. The good old days. <laughs> well, I remember I just started <laughs> like dating Shy. And. Okay. That puts us around 2015. Yeah. That's not that long ago. It feels like a lifetime ago. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like in terms of books, I've completely forgotten. Oh. I see. What you're uh, it's not so long that my memory wouldn't normally retain it. And I thought it was just me because I remember quite liking this book, but I couldn't remember anything about it. <laughs> like, I remember the thing with his dead wife. Like, I remember his dead wife coming back from the grave. I kind of remember um, Ibis and and Jackal. I kind of remember the winter town. And I kind of remember the final battle and everything else is just vibes. And I've, I've talked to a lot of people and that seems to be a really common experience, especially for those of us who have never seen the TV show. When I hear a lot of people talk about it, I hear them talk about the TV show, but it seems like for most people who read the book, if they didn't just read it, they only kind of remember the vibes. Like they don't remember the plot at all. I mean, this would literally be like if my memory of The Hobbit, a book I read when I was maybe 13, and I still managed to retain the information that it was about a hobbit named Bilbo going to the Lonely Mountain to steal a dragon's treasure. And I still remember how Bard killed the dragon and all that stuff. Like, if I can hold on to all of that, why couldn't I hold on to literally anything? (laughs) from this (laughs) and and i think so you're telling me there is going to be a final battle that's there it well okay all right so here so uh, so part one was like introducing characters the premise the magic yada 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 and then and then part three i assume was going to be this war that they're building up to and this part that we're talking about today is fucking around inside of a winter town and occasionally leaving to go see another god am i right is there a battle please tell me there's a battle ben please tell me part three gets more interesting no Uh... i'm i i I started to remember as i was rereading this 
why I have forgotten so much because I'm telling you now I struggle even having just read part two to remember exactly what happened in it. (laughs) And I will tell you why, because nothing matters. I guess that's the thing. Like the book is written in a way that is very pretty. Like I think even you said, I can tell this guy is a great writer. And I think I read this book at a time when I was writing a lot more and I was sort of trying to get out of the kind of writing we were doing when we were in college and, and right after college for a couple of years, like I wanted to grow up a little bit. I think that was honestly my thought. And I was reading this and I was like, the way this guy writes this style he has, um, like, oh, that feels right. I mean, like, this is a way to do, like, grown-up fantasy. This isn't, you know, hobbits and elves and Tom Bombadil singing in the forest. This is, like, people are smoking cigarettes, man. They're having sex. But it's <gasps> not It's not that, that Jim Butcher faux noir grocery store paperback crap. Like, this is, even though this does have a grocery store paperback version, felt like literature like this guy really knows how to write and he does really know how to write but i kind of come back to the main thing i got from these allegations is thinking about him maybe you know what if he's just an egotist like what if what if none of this actually has anything underneath it what if it's all just a veneer of a well-spoken, well-read, well-written man tricking me into thinking he's something he's not. And with that in mind, I can only see he adds a lot of things that sound pretty and profound and meaningful, but he adds them kind of just because they sounded good at the time and he doesn't think about what it does to the story. Like he says things like you said, like you can't go to battle in winter because winter is a dead time. And yeah, that he doesn't explain that. What does that actually mean? I mean, I I know why they didn't do battle in like the Middle Ages during winter. Supply lines, mainly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 Uh, There and and there's a reason that we do battle in the winter in modern warfare. Now we have better supply. Also lines, supply lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, now, now that you can store your food and you can truck it in, you know, and you can get all your soldiers winter clothing on a mass scale. You don't have to worry about, you know, starving and freezing to death while laying siege to a castle. you You've got mechanized warfare. And especially if you can do it better than the other guy. Yeah. Like I then winter's kind of your ally. They'll freeze to death while you will freeze less to death. Yeah, like I heard once somebody describe like the true the true might of the American military, and it sounds funny until you think about the implications, is that we literally can deploy and stock a Burger King to anywhere in the world within about forty eight hours. Yeah, there's there's a joke about the logistics, how uh, the military is the is a logistics machine. And like there happens to be an army attached to it. There's there's a guy I I watch who had a story about I think he was in Egypt. I can't remember exactly. I think it was Egypt. And uh, he he was uh, given so much meat that he had to like fry it up and get rid of it and uh i'm probably butchering the story but the idea is hit the egyptians he was working with they didn't get meat unless they returned back home egypt could not supply their own soldiers in their own country with meat and america is shipping meat from halfway across the world to its its troops in quantities so large that they couldn't actually use it all But what if there was something about the rotation of the earth and the pull of the seasons that altered the mystical energies 
So does that mean they could go to the uh, the equator and they could do their nope. battles, or they could go to the southern hemisphere and do their battle? Like, can can Odin be like, all right, we're going to do this war. Let's go to Brazil because it's summer in Brazil right now. I don't think they can leave America. But again, we don't know. Okay, we don't know. I mean, he's. Is there an Odin in every single country that has a belief in Odin, or is it like continents uh, or vague. like? Well, I know regions. So, like, so I know. Yeah, I mean, you're asking good questions. That his wishy washy fairy tale stuff doesn't really address, and that is like. So my that's one of my problems in in general. So it sounds like that I'm never going to get an answer to that question. No. So we've we've talked about hard magic systems before and like one of the big problems there is that there's not really a story. It's about the magic system and then the author tries to attach uh just not great characters to that and also sometimes those characters have weird daughter father relationships that turn romantic at the 11th hour uh that was fucking weird but this is the opposite where it's so soft of a magic system i don't even think there are rules the rules are whatever neil gaiman thinks up in that no moment. and i think the problem is and this is this is what the allegations have really done to my reading of the book is i think the problem is there are no rules and he thinks that's beautiful he thinks there's a beauty in the fact that this doesn't make any goddamn sense why why do i care if odin if american odin is dead first of all won't we just like if we believe hard enough where will we just get another we one? will get another one but it won't and be him It'll be a different... Oh. That's fine with me. This guy sounds like an asshole. So maybe we can dream up another better Odin. But he's also very vague on what it means to worship. Yeah, because if just by watching TV, that's considered worship. They're sacrificing time. So is there a god of work out there? Like, Because I have to sacrifice time to make money. So well, like, and, and, is, is there a work god? And then... What I had totally forgotten, and this is more part three thing, but what I had totally forgotten was this weird recurring thing that pops up over and over again that uh, the gods, America is a bad place for gods. Yeah. I don't know why he thinks that. Yeah. I mean, because only, only how much percent of us are, are non-atheists? Like honestly yeah I, like the, the, and <laughs> and so that's the that's the other thing i was talking about in part one is like something feels off about the way he talks about america like i feel like wow four percent of americans in a poll in 2023 found that they self-identified as atheists and this was a pre-9-11 world I, I know so i'm sure there were even well less. this is my thing like the America he's showing me feels like an uncanny valley America. It's really, really close. It's the real America, Ben. It's it's America's heart. No, it's it, haven't you ever been to Cairo? It's not that. It's not that he's it's not the places he's choosing to visit. It's the way he portrays our relationship to our immigrant past he it's just not quite right and i can't put my finger on it it's just a lot of little things it's little things like america is a bad place for gods and i'm like what do you actually mean by that that is something that sounds profound it is a it is a string of words that seems like it has a lot of meaning certainly disagree with it but yeah then you think about it for two seconds and you're like a fright like like how can it be how do we juggle this in our in our american gods notion that america is looked down upon by other first world nations for our belief in nonsense our hesitation to embrace evolution and climate change and all these things 
because we literally are too religious. We, you know, we we build more churches. We we yeah, we've got mega churches, and we are more willing to fight about it than a lot of people. <laughs> Who spills more religious blood than Americans? I I mean, there there are certainly you know the middle east is obviously a mess but like who yeah. funds that i mean at, at what one yeah, point or another we have wound up weird. giving everybody over there a gun and and so this is my thing where he America. where he says is there a god of guns there must be <laughs> dude i'm telling you the manga chainsaw man has a better handle on this than American gods by Neil Gaiman from from like a systems point of view. And that's what bothers me is like I can't reconcile the America I know with this fanciful notion of stuff. Like Americans 100% do have a collection of, of weird superstitions. Like uh, in part two, he'll yeah. go on – the devil at the crossroads. Yeah, I think that's an American thing. Robert Johnson selling his soul f- to be better at blues at the crossroads. The whole Easter thing. He goes. Uh, uh, we can tell this in any order because the all oh, of part God. two doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. I was wondering about that because it sure feels like we just entered a different book. Last time we're recruiting gods for this war. This time we continue to do that, but also in between doing that. Shadow goes back to a town called Lakeside, a town that is just a good town. It's it's a good town and it's good and and peaceful and good and uh, it's also good. Um, and and teens, it's so good here that teens keep running away in the middle of winter, never to be seen again, stretching back hundreds of years. Um, and, and then he runs into a guy named Heinzelman, who is very clearly some sort of uh, deity person who eats children or yep. something. So, yeah, like, like it. Uh, and, and why? Why is this guy here? This feels like a different story. Number one. And number two, if I were Shadow and you just showed me that gods are real, I am probably going to be paranoid that anyone with a strange getup or a name that is different from me is a God, even if they're not. So I'm immediately going to be like this Heinzelman's deity. Oh my God. Did you want better? What if I told you there are gods and I need you to stay in this town because you'll be safe there. And I had to pull a lot of strings to get you into this town. And okay. then there's a guy Why am who's I waiting at town? How will I then there's a you? guy who's waiting at the bus station to pick you up, even though there's no reason for him to be there. And then Shadow, I guess this is the frustrating thing. We talked about Shadow as a weak protagonist, but Shadow is also a stupid protagonist. And everybody in the book is stupid and vague all the time. And I think that's why you don't yeah. remember it. And that's why it's such a chore to read, because while they're talking pretty, while they're talking with a lot of style, and their English major is like passed with honors. They're not saying anything ever. And everybody is too stupid to put it together because the only thing this book has going for it is a couple of big reveals in terms of plot. I think also this came in 2001, like you said, pre nine 11, pre nine 11 world. And if anything, Americans were more religious. So I think The climate, the climate he's releasing this in, this is George Bush, America. There is not, we're, we're at a period where like the, the big occult revival of the sixties and seventies gave way to the satanic panic of the eighties. And there was kind of a big backlash and the, the eighties and nineties give rise to mega churches and prosperity preaching and all this stuff. And that's where Neil Gaiman drops American gods where you've got Odin and and all these, like we're getting back to our immigrant roots. We're thinking about the old country, even though every single one of us for the most part came from a country that had already been Christianized for hundreds, if not, if not a thousand years, including the countries where Odin 
originated. Well, and that's how he had to get around it by saying Odin came during Viking times. This is the other thing. Like they talk about, you know, this this poor woman from from England comes over and she sacrifices to the the Piskies or the the Pixies or I, I don't. Uh-huh. And people still do that. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I do know people who. Does any superstition work? <laughs> that's the thing. I I don't know because he talks about these sacrifices and stuff, and it's like people still do that weird stuff. Is Punxsutawney Phil in Pennsylvania a god? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Is there is there a Groundhog Day? Uh, there's also so Johnny Appleseed is going to show up, and I was like, well, he wasn't a god. No one worshipped him, but I guess that just counts. Like folklore counts too. Folk heroes count sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. And it's like, but Paul Bunyan doesn't count. But why doesn't Paul Bunyan count? Yeah, why doesn't? And he they're count? like, well, no. Are there going to be internet folk heroes? He's like, nobody ever believed in Paul Bunyan. And I'm like, brother, I thought Paul Bunyan was as real as Johnny Appleseed. You're telling, you're now telling me that Paul Bunyan is the product of an advertising campaign, a very cynical, like, ma- mascot type thing. I'm sure people thing. still believe I, it. I legit, as a child, they were lumped together for me. Yeah, Johnny Appleseed, I think he said, some, people forget our own legends. And my response was, fuck you, no, I didn't. I grew up with Paul Bunyan and Johnny Appleseed. Don't fucking tell and that's, me. That's I the forgot. other thing. It's like, you're not, I, I don't want to say, like, I, I hesitate to say this, but like, you're actually not from here. And it's, it shows in those weird little places. And I don't, like, I'm not saying. Yeah, that's something you couldn't have looked up in a yeah. book. That's something you went through the public education system he came yeah, up. you don't know that we had to like color in pictures of the blue ox. I yeah. don't even remember where I first heard of Paul Bunyan and Johnny Appleseed. They are so ever present. Yeah, I know for sure in grade school. Oh, it must have been like if I was well, coloring a picture yeah. or something in a structured setting, then yeah. But I, I probably knew who they were before that. Also, how does it how does it work exactly? You've got a god of TV. So there, there's, is there a god of video games or is there just an entertainment in, in god? Part, in part three, you'll find out it's the god, it's the god of media. Okay. Okay. Why, like, why is it all one, al- all one amalgamation? Then? I don't know. Why isn't there just a Norse god then that is a representation of all the Norse gods? I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> And that's the other thing. He's really also disappointingly vague on what. So why hasn't the second coming happened? If we all believe in Jesus and G- that means Jesus exists. And like, why not? Why, why, why not? Why haven't we done this, Ben? I don't know. And he doesn't know. OK, I would say I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing to not have concrete logic I, yeah, I don't need all of the answers, but I need you to stop creating mysteries at some point. Yeah, I, I need us to focus on something important. Like, like you said, so Gandalf is talking to Frodo. He, he gives him enough of the story so that we understand it, but he's like, I'm not going to give you the full tale. I'd be here forever. Uh, but we got to do something about this ring, Frodo. Big deal. Yeah. Let like Dark Lord, you, you don't to need get to it. know like, that okay, Sauron is a Maiar a of Aule who fell under the sway of Melkor in the first age and blah, blah, blah. Like Tolkien knows all that. So mainly so you don't have to. Mainly so to him, yeah. it feels like a, a deep grounded world. But he's he even said he's, he's like, I'm, I'm very now. consciously like, <laughs> I think Tolkien has an idea of what Tom Bombadil is. Like he has ideas yeah, for things. Yeah, and we never yeah, know. And he's not going to tell you. But that's okay. That's okay because Tom Bombadil was not the main character of the story or the main villain of the story or a major plot device of the story. He's only there in three chapters. Yeah, like we have this combination of like Wednesday is the most interesting character we have and Wednesday has gone from this part. He shows up intermittently to go on random ass adventures but there's really no connection. The main horror or, or, or like the main thing of this is shadow is in this town 
and this town is so nice and inviting and perfect and there's little hints dropped in at a snail's pace that this town doesn't make sense its prosperity doesn't make sense its economy doesn't make sense it it is sustained by some outside force and then the kid goes missing and then we find out that a kid goes missing every year there you go yeah you know this is like an episode of supernatural at least the early seasons i never watched past season five uh, at me but those were just an hour well a little less than an hour because commercials it was like showed up they already did the research they know there's something weird about the town and they're sacrificing you to some sort of pagan god we're off to the races we gotta stop that i don't i don't need an hour episode before that explaining that and then not doing anything about it because spoiler nothing happens in this part about that the kid goes missing he at no point suspects that there is a god or some sort of demonic entity in the town during this part anyway maybe he smartens up again you're telling me gods exist demons probably exist folklore exists so yeah demons probably exist for sure i think the thing is i think shadow might have an inkling of suspicion especially at the end when he's at the end of part two i mean when he you know spoilers he gets arrested and he's reading the the book of meeting minutes i'm glad he got that i i don't know why he got that but okay and he's reading the book of meeting minutes and I think he is starting to put it together and he wants to keep reading because I think he has kind of figured it out, but then something shocking happens and he's distracted and he doesn't come back to it for a while. Oh, good. Because that that's what this needed. This needed more drawn out this right here, Ben, this is a short story of a different book. Or, or sorry, this is just a short story that's been inserted. I think it's all book. short you stories. Could write, you could write a 30 or 50 page short story, a few chapters, if you even need that, about a guy going to a weird town in the American Midwest and, oh, looks like there's a, a fucking demon that eats children or whatever. Done. I think it's all short stories. And you can cut it, you can cut it in a way where it's fast and engaging Again, supernatural. You can you can cut it into a one hour TV episode. <laughs> like, <sighs> I think the problem is this is a series of ideas. Like I think I told you at the beginning of this, I was gonna probably wind up around a four or a five for content I- and ideas. And I think the more I reread, the more I'm like, I'm leaning towards a three. Myself. I think I'm getting I'm down. Thinking- as I go, I'm getting down to a three (laughs) because the problem is when, so he's in this town, he's slowly getting this weird mystery. And I mean, slowly we're talking like, yeah, I was going to say, I think the pacing was a three. And then I got to this part where the plot just stops dead in its tracks. And we can't go forward with this war of old versus new. We got to go on a bunch of short story side quests. And, I I think I have to give the pacing a two at this point. It's so plotting and slow. I'm kind of with you because like, I think I hesitate to say this, but I got to take out the words about book scissors and cut, 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 cut. Like if you wanted to make an anthology, like the American gods anthology, where you put in a short story that is loosely connected by a narrative thread of shadow and Wednesday going on these road trips and they encounter Chernabog, and they encounter Easter, and they encounter the the guy who everybody forgets, which is that's never paid off. It's just a guy everybody forgets. Oh, really? There's no payoff? That's fucking bullshit. To this day, he has never said who that god is. And again, fucking he thinks that's really fucking cool. No, you have to at least have a fucking idea. There's a guy who... The, at least mortals don't know his name because they can't hear it. They forget it immediately. They forget they met this guy. And 
I thought that God, that fucking sucks, man. Yeah, you keep wondering who it is. <laughs> and you keep waiting for yeah, that to I, be paid off. Does he show up ever again? Uh I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh god maybe he did maybe he's here right now <laughs> yeah yeah there you go there you go uh no but part two yeah part two is where this starts to drag and i can tell you i went into this like i have never gone into a reread before in my life i had no idea what was going to happen in part two i remember nothing about this other than there was a winter town and it was kind of boring and now i remember it's like oh yeah there was a demon killing children and i even told you privately i was like you would think that that was something like me, Ben, specifically. I would remember. I can yeah, name. You You wrote something like that <laughs> for Eden first. I can name like <laughs> 10 horror movies where we're sacrificing a child for a bountiful harvest and at least one South Park episode where where that is the plot. And I could I totally forgot that happened in this book. <laughs> and I got to tell you, like. When you find out, there is one final twist with all that. And when you find out what the twist is, it's good twist. And you could tell he had an idea and he just wanted to put it in there. And it's like you said, is it in service of the novel? Absolutely not. It's a different story. I can tell you, I was reading and I I have a pretty good ability to sit down and make myself read. I can just zone out for hours and read. Every time I tried, I saw Fellowship of the Ring was right there. And I was like, you I know love what? Let's this. see what Frodo's I couldn't have up to. this better. <laughs> this, is, this is the shot in the arm you needed to enjoy Fellowship of the Ring. I got to part three. Okay. And I was like, oh, I remember part three now. Oh, God. And Nate. Wait, good or bad? Nate, I'm going to tell you. I didn't, but I found myself starting to like flip. It's like, is it over? Are we? Nope, still going. Nope, still going. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, no. <sighs> How can you fuck up a war between old and new gods? Oh, you don't have it. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Well, first me? off, he doesn't know who the new gods are. I think that becomes very apparent as it goes on. He's got the fat kid who represents technology and smokes toad. He's got the media. Yeah, you know who the new gods are. It's Jesus. He's got... Well, Except this was this was the, the, you you came to the you came to the show a, a little too. One late. thing he learned well and well and true about America is you you make Jesus the uh, antagonist of your American gods. Oh, yeah, no, that's not getting published in America. <laughs> yeah, where we're where we're where it's a bad place for God. Where we're not yeah. religious. Um, yeah, we're <laughs> non-religious. America would. Uh, I guess yeah. yeah, and that's the other thing too. Like he he says the Native Americans don't have gods. What. The, that's the thing. He's like the Native Americans came here, and and at, at one point, the character named Whiskey Jack. Um, he he says America is a bad place for God, and he's a Native American. He says my people figured that out a long time ago. That's why we worship like a creative spirit, and we worship nature itself. Did, and we okay. Is that not does that not count when you have fucking Johnny Appleseed? You a creative spirit doesn't count as a god. I, but Johnny Appleseed does. <laughs> at the same time, there is a flashback in which the original people come to America with their god and they diversify and they create many more gods. And I don't know what, again. Are there are there a bunch of different Jesuses? For so each, in the show, that's uh, actually a plot. Okay. Okay. But not in this book, I assume Jesus hardly. He does not like, touch Jesus in this book. There is... Um, in i'd let jesus touch me you should you should invite him into your heart (laughs) um oh dude that means so that means we will finally have a definitive answer for what the holy ghost even is because we just dreamed it up and now it's real you know I, i read something apparently the first season of the american gods tv show was very well received and then rumor has it there was a big dispute between the showrunner and neil gaiman Mm -hmm. the showrunner wanted to make significant changes 
And Neil Gaiman insisted on a more faithful to the book adaptation. What can you do with this book as a faithful? And adaptation? Apparently the next two seasons were terrible <laughs> and then it was canceled. <laughs> was it more, was it faithful to the book adaptation and terrible or was I it? I haven't seen it. I haven't changes? seen it and I kind of don't want to watch it. No, I, I, I don't care about the source material. I don't think I'm going to care about again, all the, all the stuff that I like the short story, the it's not a short story. It needs to be cut to a short story about a perfect idyllic town. And Oh, there's a dark underbelly. I supernatural did that. Everyone sacrificed couples. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I I think I know the South park one. It's the Britney Spears one. Like, yeah. Where they har- we harvest a celebrity as a culture. Every year we we harvest a, a celebrity. We we destroy them with our our praise. We drove Britney Spears insane. That's the premise of the South Park episode. Yeah, yeah. It's look. I can get this itch scratched somewhere else in less time, and it, it's bad. Well, so look, there, here's another thing that really sat with my head. And I, I, I feel kind of bad because I made fun of this guy in the first episode, but there was one comment I got on that thread where it was a guy who said he didn't know what, what I was talking about, but he didn't care because he'd always hated Neil Gaiman because Neil Gaiman just took a bunch of people's cultures and, and basically insulted them or, or, or appropriated them. I forget what exactly he said, but it was something like that. And he was also very angry about it. But the more I sat there and I thought about it, the more I was like, I don't know if I want to say, I don't know if I'd go so far as to say he appropriated culture with all the weight. Is it appropriation if he gets it wrong? Yes. If he gets it so wrong that it's not even resembling (sighs) the original? This is kind of where I'm going. Like... I guess it would be because the fucking Halloween. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, okay, this is kind of where I'm going. It's like you wrote a book about a country you're not from, uh, about cultures you don't have any lived experience of, about religions you've only read about in books in translation, because I guarantee you don't speak any of the languages. And yeah, you probably talked to a lot of people. You probably did very good research. You you probably worked very hard on it. And I, that's why I say I'm not like when I say you're not from well that's how you get the uncanny yeah I, like when i say you're not from here i'm not he's got it all out of books instead of experience i'm not offended by any interpretation of america on portrayal here this is somebody who obviously likes america very much and and is interested in its history and and culture and and even the parts of america most people would ignore like cairo illinois and uh, the, the house on the rock and, and all these other like random places in flyover country. But like, you're just not, it doesn't quite click, man. Like I live here and for you to tell me America is a bad place for gods, brother, I, Wait, I, I don't is, know is what you mean. Is there a copy of the founding fathers out there? Cause, uh, Especially during Bush's America, we brought up the founding fathers all the fucking That's time. my thing. I was like, worship is what Americans do. How can it be a bad place for gods? And all of our materialist nonsense is worshipped to the extent that it becomes real. And I know he says the gods come and go. Like at one point we worshipped railroads and there was a railroad god. And at one point we worshipped the freeways and there's a freeway god. I don't think we ever worshipped a railroad. That's <laughs> use of a railroad. I don't think entails worship. We wrote folk songs about railroads. Railroads dominated significant portions of our culture. the The transcontinental railroad was a massive achievement, and at the time, yeah, probably for like like a solid thirty years. Maybe even like I, I'll give it fifty years. Yeah, it wasn't super long for 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 a solid yeah. fifty years. Yeah, bet I bet it was like reverent worship, and in this world, maybe that would create a god. Maybe it wouldn't. But I don't understand what creates a god, and I don't understand why gods are yeah. weak here. Because here's the thing, bud: people were not sacrificing to Chernabog in large numbers in the old world either. 
and he talks about like you know he won't touch he won't touch jesus or wait a minute hold on hold on motherfucker said that the native americans didn't have gods who were the aztecs sacrificing to i i this is this is the thing maybe you could argue that's Mexico, not, a, not America. Does, is, does, it's the America. Do the, do, do the parts we took from Mexico count? Are they <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Again, that will, that, that then breaks it down to like, do our, our countries real then like, like the boundaries. Well, of the I guess his like, argument would be if we believe they're real, then yes. Okay. What about disputed territory? It, the, the gods are probably weak there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. On one of those islands in in the South China Sea that's barely big enough to park a boat on. I How don't know. How much worship do you need? Is there is there a is there a border wall god that's just oh, gradually no. gaining strength? <laughs> yeah, right. Is that like why have none of these gods like I don't know run for office? I. You have godly powers you can't just then again maybe maybe they have i don't know who the fuck mr world is and mr do you want a spoiler uh town Shh. fuck yeah fine who is he loki okay i can't uh, i can't see your face because you never turn your webcam on but i pictured it all right <laughs> So, okay, so I guess, okay, let, I guess let, let me explain to people who didn't read this book, uh, because as we know, the God of books is pretty weak anymore with, uh, or I guess he's wrapped up in the God of media. Well, or is he Thoth? Yeah. God of writing. Hanging out in Cairo, uh, Illinois. Yeah, that's a good, good point. So the, the, the plot here, if you could call it that, yes, he gets dumped off into a town, uh, he learns that he might be able to bring his wife back with a thunderbird, and apparently, dreaming about a thunderbird is attracting too much attention. He to can't. Him. That doesn't go anywhere, and we never find out what that dream was. Oh, okay. Well, I kind of figured. Like, I just had this this inkling that the dreams didn't matter after they seem to go nowhere in part one. So I assumed that part two, if they don't, you'll make this a two parter. There's not enough left for part three. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Part three is equally as long okay. as part two, and there's there's just all right, but there. I'm not reading it. You then. don't have to read it. <laughs> okay, all right, yeah, no, we make it a two part. Okay, then. so so okay, let me finish summarizing part two because this will take like no time at all. Uh, I kind of I I think I already we already talked about Loki anyway, so I'm not super shocked that he's Mr. World. Mr. World is the leader of the new gods, um, and Odin talked about at the beginning of this, the like the Bishop game, like he has cons that he likes and they always evolve two people. So I guess maybe that was foreshadowing like, Oh, Odin, he, this is all a con. I assume that now that you're telling me this, I assume that Odin and Loki are orchestrating this war for some reason. And uh, at the end of this whole thing, Oh yeah. Laura comes in at one point and she's an, ass to shadow um but yeah they they go there there's two things i want to talk about well one thing i want to talk about one thing i want to mention uh the the thing ends with uh odin going to a, a peace conference in kansas city and uh i guess there's not a god of taylor swift yet or the kansas city chiefs but you know whatever and um uh, Odin's head explodes. The end. Oh my god. Is there's gonna be a war? And uh, oh yeah, Shadow gets put in jail because he's called a murderer by his friends. No, so so wife. here's another thing that just straight up doesn't make sense, and I think Neil Gaiman kind of forgot or didn't know and then wrote himself into a corner. He just forgot about the Iron Fleet. No, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Danny just kind of forgot. Um so the whole time Shadow's telling Wednesday, he's like, I'm not going to go back to prison. I kept wondering, well, you're out on year three of a six year sentence, which I presume means you have been paroled. Now, I don't know if things are different in England, but in America, that's usually how that works. And yeah, 
you have to check in. With yeah, you robots. and you're not usually allowed to go across state lines and stuff like that. Depends what crime you commit and and, and who you were. Was it federal? Was it state? That sort of thing. But yeah, so Shadow, he immediately crosses state lines over and over and over again and does not ever check in with a parole officer. And so naturally, he's wanted for parole violation. Yeah, why does she call him a murderer? Though? Because she heard about the teen girl getting murdered and Shadow and was in prison. It was Shadow? Yeah, because she sucks. Okay, do you want to talk about the red flag? Why was she even there? She's his second cousin. Oh my, fuck that. Okay, so that that's convenient. But I just want to know, Ben, and I think I know the answer to this. What is backstage? I don't know. They, they go back. Okay, all right. That's all I need to know. Figured it's not even worth mentioning because I figured we're never going to get an answer to it. All right, Ben. What were you going to say? Are we diving into part three that oh, I haven't no, I was read? Gonna ask, I, I was going to talk read. about the red okay. flag. Because uh, I did, you know, people... Oh, is it when Odin gets with a girl and he's like, wow, she doesn't even look legal. And he's like, I don't care about legal. And it's okay, like, there's, did you have to add there's that? Two red, did there's you, two, did two you, red flags. You... <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking of a different red flag, but you're right. So uh, one of the things that was brought up in the Threads comment was there's all these red flags in Neil Gaiman's writing that he's some kind of creep. There's a couple. Uh, Odin... Yeah. Yeah. Odin is specifically looking for a virgin because that will give him power. You know, the interesting thing is I have read the Poetic Eddas. I read the Prose Edda much longer ago. So I don't remember the Prose Edda enough to say for certain that this is true. I actually don't remember anything in the sources for the Norse myths about Odin needing to have sex with virgins to charge up his magic. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I, that's I a thing. Haven't heard of that. It sounds like a Zeus thing, but yeah. yeah. And interestingly enough, and that's that goes back again to the guy who said Neil Gaiman's kind of a cultural appropriator. It's like you're you're kind of just mixing shit up because you like the way it sounds. You think that sounds like something that your Odin would do, and I'll be honest, Odin in the stories is not a saint i'm sure he had no qualms about yeah but why does shadow shadow is a human being no i mean like why is shadow like like when odin's like well i don't care if she's not of age and shadow's not like okay but i do oh like you're my employer that doesn't mean i have to just fucking go with that yeah you're not gonna sleep with someone who's under age you raise very valid points and concerns and it does uh that does raise issues about why shadow was so sad when odin died um okay red flag (laughs) i'm I'm handing out two red flags one for odin one for shadow and then i'm gonna hand shadow another red flag uh i don't know how old shadow is i was guessing 30s mid 30s i think it maybe it's mentioned is he like 36 or something no, he's like I 33, know. I think. I, I do have one other thing to bring up, but I'll let you finish. I think he's 33. And then he's hanging out with that manic pixie dream girl because, well, his... Oh, God. what What is she in relation to him? The Widow Muscle Farm is the cousin of the sheriff, and she's coming in to make out with him because they're kissing cousins. They're second cousins, which is too close still. I know you might be okay genetically. I know it might be legal, but it's still fucking weird. And um, then uh, the Manic Pixie Dream College girl from earlier who was hitchhiking, she is the sister of Shadow's neighbor. Coincidences. Uh, uh, No, not coincidences. Sorry. Coincidence implies lazy. Synchronicity. Force. Oh my God! Is there a is there a, a force god, or is that just fallen media again? I don't know. So, <laughs> so she was a college girl, right? Let's say charitably, yeah. she can't drink, right? I think she said she was twenty. Okay, that's the most charitable. Yeah, I could be. I could be wrong. Twenty one max. Let's say. Um, Shadow thirty three. For some reason, I cannot even begin to imagine. The Widow Muscle Farm calls Shadow a murderer. And then this mm. girl 
makes out with Shadow. That's her first instinct. She grabs Shadow and she kisses him. And Shadow is shocked. Good response, Shadow. You should be shocked. Yeah. Also, yeah. you're a big man. She's a small girl. And she can't pull you if she doesn't want if you don't want it. So so Shadow is like, well, you know what? I'm about to go down for murder. I'm going to enjoy this. And starts making out with her back. And so, Shadow, you now have two red flags. Thor killed himself because he didn't want to hang out in Pennsylvania. Ah, uh, fair. No, I call bullshit that Thor is unknown, unloved, <laughs> and unworshipped. Yeah. That's what I call bullshit I think... on. I know this was a pre-MCU uh, world, but no, the, Marvel yeah, Thor Comics was still, still selling Thor yeah. for... Yeah. I and Neil Gaiman as a comic book writer would have more than known that I. So does that. So if you buy the comic, though, does that is that count as worship for the media God or does that count as worship for Thor? America is a bad place for gods. Oh, you got me. This is the place where I think almost everybody like we, we, we are rapidly becoming less Christian. But I not if we vote in the right guy, you know what I'm We're saying? We're voting for Kamala. Words about books is voting for Kamala Harris. <laughs> I'm just going to stop the joke now. It's getting too close. <laughs> it's getting too close. Oh, God, it is. Get, is it getting too close? Um, so, yeah, I think I don't know how he squares how superstitious we are, how. Well, that doesn't count. Uh, okay, Johnny Appleseed counts, but like superstition, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. So, so Shadow makes out with a girl who is of age. I guess it's legal when Shadow like Shadow knows enough to not break a law, but I feel like Shadow wouldn't mind like maybe being in a relationship with a significant power imbalance, maybe with an employee or with a tenant. Or with a, f- I don't know why Shadow would have these things, but you know, like it's it just seems like a uh, thing. Or with perhaps a a fan of his books he met at a convention, um, or a book signing. Oh God. Um, oh Jesus. I just think Shadow might be might might do those things. He seems to be a little weak in the willpower department. You know what I'm saying? Oh, fuck me. So part <laughs> part three. There's a very long exchange of Odin's body happens on neutral ground happens at a place uh, where um, gods have basically no power so that they know it's neutral ground, which is the very center of America, which you will be happy to know is is in Kansas. It is. I don't know. There's apparently that this is probably real. There is a place in Kansas that is supposedly the dead center of America and because it is dead, like America is a bad place I've for gods. Yeah. And so that is where the gods have um, the least power and they can comfortably reach. They can still carry guns. I don't know. Like, I mean, Odin got shot in the face. He didn't get magic to death. <laughs> That's I, a good point. I don't know. It doesn't have to make sense. It's wishy-washy r- romantic. He's he's real good with words. He says real pretty words, Nate. I <laughs> They get Odin's body back. I'm going to spare you the details of that. He finds out that Loki Lie Smith was in fact Loki Lie Smith. And uh <laughs> He finds that out because Loki is driving all of the new gods. He's their driver. Okay. He gets Odin's body, but somebody's got to stand vigil for Odin. And if you remember at the beginning of the book, Odin said, you'll do my laundry. You'll punch my enemies. You'll make my breakfast. And in the unlikely event that I should die, you will stand vigil. I may have misquoted some of that, but he's got to stand vigil for Odin. So what they do is they take Odin to a world tree in Virginia, as you do. It's a bad place for gods. That's and that's sounds, that's on their license like plate, actually. Virginia, bad place for gods. <laughs> and they uh, put Odin in front of the, the world tree. Uh, the Norns are there. 
I'm not entirely sure why the Norns would be there. No. The Norns are like the the fates. Uh, three three okay. women, you know. They, they, it's also like those those three Zoria women. Um, yeah, that's what I thought they were. But no, they okay. weren't the Norns. They're their own thing. A lot of cultures. No, but I mean, I thought that's what their their thing was. They were like, oh yeah, things. yeah, yeah, yeah. So why are they at Odin's death? I don't fucking know. And okay, somebody's got to stand vigil. Now, what standing vigil for Odin means? And again, I'm going to point out this is. This is, this is not in Norse myths. I can only imagine because I know the Norse myths. I really kind of know two things. I know the Norse myths and I know Christianity. <laughs> and um, Christianity <laughs> is notably absent from this. So I can only rely on my knowledge of the Norse myths to say that Neil Gaiman likes to make shit up. So I'm sure when it comes to the Native Americans and every and the the Slavic gods and everything else that's in here, he's probably just making up shit too. Um, so standing vigil for Odin means you got to be, uh, hanged, I believe is the term when you do it to a person on the world tree for nine days as was Odin. That doesn't make sense for a lot of reasons. Odin wasn't standing vigil for anyone when he did that. He, it has nothing to do with death whatsoever. I mean, he sacrificed himself to himself, but So they mention they so this is I'm guessing this is foreshadowing because they mention this in part one about some guy who tried to trick him and then Odin just killed him. Is Shadow going to die here? Yes and no. OK, does he go backstage again? Whatever the fuck Kinda backstage so is. Shadow, uh, they tell him he doesn't have to do this. They'll get somebody who is much more likely to survive it. Uh, perhaps one of the dwarves or an elf. I don't know. Or a god. Maybe a fucking god. Um, but So wait, do the elves change over time then? Like uh, they went from whatever they were in Norse mythology and now they're like... We'll know, get to that. It's Lord of the Rings or Keebler. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So okay, Shadow hangs on this tree for nine days. Good. And by nine days, I mean like 75 pages. Oh my God. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not sure. 75 is probably too many pages, but like, it's a lot of pages. Oh my God. This isn't just like a, and then he hung there, skip forward every day in excruciating detail. Ah, So that's, that's a, that's a Stephanie Meyer thing. Um, just going to say that. Uh, no, Stephanie Meyer, you know what she did when faced with a similar thing of Bella just sitting there for months she had four blank pages, <laughs> which said like like fall, spring, winter. I would actually argue Stephanie Meyer handled the situation maybe a little better from a wow. pacing perspective. The prose was fantastic. I really felt like I was hanging on a tree, dying of thirst, <laughs> while my blood slowly pulled in my chest. I'm not joking. I mean, he does a very good job of really writing and making you feel like you are suffering on the cross alongside Shadow. I mean, the world tree. <laughs> and I don't know what that is because I uh, this isn't a good place for gods. So I never learned what a cross even was. No, it's so. not a good place for gods. You probably don't even know what an Odin is. I know him because of uh, he, he's the Marvel, right? He's uh, he's Hamill Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> there probably aren't even like 16 shows about Loki on Disney Plus. I know there aren't 16. I know when I exaggerate numbers that really bothers some people. I know there are only like two or three, but that's still too many. It's like seven. Yeah, you know. he dies. OK, Laura comes to Good. visit him. Does she give him that coin and he comes back to life? No. Does she give him a Thunderbird? Because that was a thing. That's a plot point. I now. think this, that has to pay off. Yeah, I think <laughs> Thunderbird gives somebody a ride. They're like the Eagles. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm so, what? <laughs> so Shadow. <laughs> Shadow's dying what? and he meets Zoria Polunochnaya. 
and she's like, "Hey, you're you die in there's two hey, you're there's dead. two paths behind <laughs> me. One of them tells only lies, and the other tells only no." She says, "There's two paths. You can pick one." And he's like, "Well, what what's the difference?" And she's like, "One path will oh. tell you the truth, and one path will tell you lies." And he's like, I will take the truth, please. And he sees a bunch of uncomfortable <laughs> moments from his life. Uh, some with his mother finds out his father was. So the Matrix came out <laughs> around this time, right? <laughs> so Shadow was blue pilled, as the kids say. A <laughs> red pill. The red pill is the truth. That's why the conservatives yeah. think they took it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shadow was red pilled, as the kids say in this land that is terrible for fake gods. And he goes down the true path. He finds out his dad's Odin. He finds out his mom. He watches her die again. He watches some other stuff. Oh, my God. His, his dad was Odin? Yep, sure was. What? And then uh, he goes to another path. Oh, he runs into the cat lady. He still hasn't figured out he fucked the house cat. Um, but he figures it out eventually. <laughs> and he gets there in the end. And um, I'm sorry. <laughs> did you not pay attention to that in part one? Oh, no. You you mentioned it last episode. I was like, that that has escaped my mind. It no longer. <laughs> no, no. He, he had hot dream sex with Bast, the cat lady, who is in. Sandman, and she is just a uh, uh, like a cat, like a humanoid cat, like has a cat head. We're not talking like anime cat girl here. We're talking like looks like a cat. <laughs> We're talking like looks like a cat. So, so there's that. And Bast <laughs> is like, okay, okay, three paths behind right. me. One will give you wisdom. One will make you whole, and one will kill you. I will take the one that does not kill me, please. He says, I don't know what to choose. And I, she says... I, I know. I know which one to choose. Put me in the game, coach. I'm she ready. She says, if, I, if, if you trust me, I would say take the middle path. The one that makes you whole. I'm going to be honest with you, and this is probably a life lesson for me. I kind of forget what happens. Okay, I was going to say, what does making you whole mean? I don't know, but he uh, he gets to... He's okay that his wife is dead now? Is that... He gets to that river at uh, in the mummy game. <laughs> I was going to say. And Thoth comes to pick him up, Mr. Ibis. And he's like, okay. hey... You know, a lot of stuff, a lot, big day, a big day for you. And Shadow's like, so I'm dead, right? He's like, eh, eh, kind of. There's a lot of book left, though, so we'll see. You're backstage, which is like being alive, but eh, it's 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 a lot. Uh, so he ferries him over to Mr. Jackal, who is, of course, Anubis. Oh, Bass took his heart, by the way. Oh, my God. But Bass okay. took his heart out. Um, and so wait, why why was that not Charon, Ben? Because he's Greek. How do we how how do we decide? Oh, they which actually they, they the talk about that. They, yeah, to... he thought of that. Okay, you sassy bitch. Um, it was because <laughs> Mister Ibis asked if he could be the one to take care of Shadow because he knows him from work. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. So he takes him to Anubis and Anubis is like, okay, interesting. He makes him relive everything he's ever done in his life. And Shadow's like, please stop. And he's like, nah. Do we have to experience everything he's ever done in his life? You're already experiencing his death in excruciating detail. And even Neil Gaiman is not that self-indulgent. Okay. So, so one one thing. Uh, did we ever mention that? The crime he went to jail was for Laura. Uh, yeah, he mentions that kind of, but it's like vague on what it is. Like Laura planned a robbery. The crime he went to jail for. Okay, so this is actually interesting. I'll tell you that. The crime okay. he went to jail for. So 
it's hinted that like Laura planned a robbery and Shadow was the getaway driver. But then Shadow found out during the robbery that these dudes were going to try to screw him and Laura over. And Shadow beat them into the hospital. Okay. But the money was never found. And they couldn't... Okay. Because the money was never found, they couldn't prove there was a robbery. What? It was a really good plan. I think that you could prove there's a robbery because the money has not been found. There was once money in one location and it is not there anymore. I don't know. The point is, Shadow did not go down for robbery. He went down for assault, which is why he got six what? years would they not go all go down for conspiracy to commit robbery? nobody they could not prove there was a robbery because nobody had money okay could they not be like shadow will cut you a deal turn on those guys that we'll would give me, you it, but if he turned on them then they'd turn on laura but did laura have the money who has the money well if they admit that they conspired to rob i so there's two things going on here obviously there's they can't find the money and also nobody was like, hey, I was robbing that place when Shadow beat the shit out of me. OK, so Shadow, you're going to jail for assault. I'll give you and your girlfriend, wife, whatever, wife. I'll give you both immunity or no, I'll give you parole. If you flip on them, say you were robbing that place, I'll bust them and then I'll offer them a deal Tell me where the money is. I'll give you a reduced sentence. So anyway, they weigh Shadow's heart against the feather. <laughs> okay. And uh, it's cool. It's even. Shadow Shadow did all right. They let him choose. He gets to choose his afterlife. You want to go to heaven? You want to go to hell? Wild card choice. Oh. Poe, hey. And um, I, Shadow's like... I, I know the answer to this one. No, because there's a third option. Tragic sad boy option. Do you know what it is? Is it resurrect inside of the tomb as a as a your second life NPC? No, it is nothing. He wants the void. Oh, don't be such a fucking crybaby, dude. He wants the void. He's had enough of this life. He's had enough of he's had enough of zombie wives and sexy cats and college girls. Yeah, and... that's what heaven is for. <laughs> a few hundred years of that, you'll forget it. <laughs> so uh, no, nah, he's done. He... Are you stupid? He's gonna, he's gonna take the void. He's gonna take the void. Okay, was there is there enough emotional attachment to Shadow for me to care about his sad boy tragic backstory? Because I don't give a fuck. About I'll be honest him. with you. Even the first time, even the him. first time I read this before I had any baggage or anything, I did not really care because you obviously know he's coming back. Because I'm not lying. There's like a hundred pages left. Oh my fucking god. Okay, so. All the gods are all the gods are lining up on this one hill to battle. And Horus, by the way, Horus, the hawk man who is insane. He came to shadow while he was on the tree and he said a bunch of stuff to him and they talked. They had a good time. So they have a connection. Now, the gods are lining up on this hill and the the fat uh, kid who smokes toad decides he needs to talk to Mr. World. He walks up to Mr. World and he's like, I don't know why we're doing this. And Mr. World's like, oh, yeah. What? Yeah, he's like, but he's like, he earlier said that the, the old gods are finished. You got me, bro. So uh, the old gods are all gone. He, you dig? He had a big freak out when he was at the place where the gods don't have any power. And since then, he's been a little weird. And now he's like, so like, we kill him, right? But like, they're fading away anyway. And it doesn't really like make sense for us to kill them. Like, like, I don't even know why we would. It's a terrible plan. Wait, how can we kill them? I thought that they just had to lose worshipers. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He's like, they're guess- they're losing worshipers. So like. Can't we just let him fade away? Like, do we have to risk our lives? Like, some of us might die in this. And, you know, why would we why would we risk that when this is kind of a non-issue? And Mr. World, who is Loki, is like... Mr. World is like, you just got Loki lysmithed and shoots him in the head. He's like, come here, I'll tell you a secret. I'm going to take a branch of the world tree. 
I have a guy getting it for me right now. Mr. Town's getting it for me right now. Who is Mr. Town? Uh, he's he's that Men in Black guy. Okay, so he's not important. Right, is what exactly. You're telling me. He's, okay. Laura's going to kill cool. him. It, gotcha. it's, I, I, I don't even care about that. Um, okay. So he's coming back with the branch of the world tree. Laura kills him, takes the branch of the world tree. So Mr. World's like, I'm going to take a branch of the world tree. And right before the battle breaks out, I'm going to throw it across the battlefield. And it's going to become a spear. And I'm going to say, I dedicate this battle to Odin. Okay. And all the blood that spills goes to me and Odin. All this power. I, I, I don't really care which one of you wins. You're going to murder the fuck out of each other. And all this power goes to me and Odin. Okay. And then he's... And the kid's like, sounds good. I guess I'll see you on the battlefield. Yep. And then he grabs the kid <laughs> and he stabs him in the face. Okay, so now do we not like media anymore? Is that what happens? We are... We're done watching no, TV. We're going to go outside. He doesn't affect him. Well, first off, he was technology and the internet. Oh, okay. So I have to leave this call. No, now. he doesn't okay, affect us. We affect him. We're working on a new one of him right now. Okay. We got a new toad smoking podcast how, how guy quickly brewing does it, up right as we speak. How, how quickly does one get manufactured? I would assume instantaneously with how much internet we're using. Uh, I'll tell you what, with as many people are listening to this podcast, not that fast. <laughs> so he's a grower not a show so we'll get we'll get ourselves a god easter's suit. there she she's ready to fight she's you know gonna throw some punches i don't she's not really much of a fighter i don't really know why easter's even there um but horace shows she's up she's got curves horace shows up she's curvy she sure is buddy uh, Horace shows up and he's like, Hey, shadow is going to die. We need your help. And she's like, okay, but like, how could I get to shadow? I'm over here and he's over there. And that's when the thunderbird shows up. I think it's a thunderbird. I don't know. I, I don't, again, that kind of vanished. I assume it's a thunderbird. Does he bring Laura back from the dead with his magic thunderbird powers? No, that's not, that's not where this is going. Oh, that's unfortunate. No, she needed to stay dead. Um, yeah, no, she sucks. Yeah. She's she doesn't seem like a very good person. No, <laughs> no. That's the other problem. Is like she's not sympathetic at all. And the other thing, though, is Shadow. Like, I totally know why she cheated on you. Like, I hate Laura, and I get Laura because you suck too. So anyway, <laughs> they fly over to Shadow. They bring him back from the dead. There's another conversation with Whiskey Jack where he's like, America's a bad place for gods. My people figured that out because the Native Americans never worshipped any gods, which is not true. But Neil Gaiman likes to make shit up. And when you're me, like 10 years ago, you're like, oh, this makes sense. I haven't read any. I haven't been reading enough stuff. There you have it. They, they bring Shadow back. They're like, Shadow, you're the only one who can save all the gods. You're the only one boring enough to avert this war, because it sounds like the war is going to be averted. So they fly back. You're promising me this war, They fl- and it's not going to fucking happen. They fly back, and it turns out Shadow was not the only one who could stop this war. Because yeah, because you got Princess Leia as well. Yep, and Laura stabs Loki with that branch of the world tree, and it turns into a spear. Oh, that's all it takes. Yeah, no, you can just stab him. They shot Odin in the face. I so Odin actually died. He didn't. Yeah, just, no. He didn't, he's planning like, on coming him. back with his blood power, but like he's a ghost right now. He's just clinging. He's barely clinging. His plan was to always get shot in the face, thus sparking the war. Okay. Okay. And then, oh, by the way, he won't touch Jesus, but I think Ganesha shows up. And I think Shiva shows up. I don't remember. But Notably people still very much. The prophet Muhammad. Uh, yeah, well, I could tell you that, like, m- my friend, you could drive to the parking lot of my company, and I will tell you, on, on the car dashboards of many of my colleagues... <laughs> are idols of these gods. They go to temple 
on festival days, and they do. But how many of those people are white, Ben? How many white people are worshiping Ganesha? <laughs> Not a lot, but does that matter? <laughs> I thought we brought them with us from the Holy Land. <laughs> it matters to some people. This was the thing I don't get is like, how can, how can like Ganesha be one of these American gods on hard times when I, I'm, I can walk to a temple when, when they are, uh, the most populous people on the planet and it's not even fucking close. (laughs) I, America is a bad place for gods. America is a bad place for gods. Yep. Uh, that's, that's. That's I definitely can't story. walk out into the parking lot of my apartment right now and see a cross and a Ganesha <laughs> and a Star of David. And yeah, no, I, I definitely, it's a bad place for gods. Nobody, nobody here believes in anything. Just a whole country of atheists. Yep. All I know 4% you. of them. It's almost like you came from England straight to New York City. <laughs> you started reading a bunch of books. and you you visited places but like you weren't raised there because if you were raised there you would find out that there's actually a a ton actually of american folk beliefs and traditions and weird things and and like you would have to mention christianity to really get into it because like again the number one god we brought over here was the christian one because that's what Europe was worshiping at that time. I don't know what this old country bullshit is, but uh, you would find if you explored the Christian side of things, and this is something I did not really know a ton about when I first read American Gods, but I've done like a lot of looking into since then. Folk beliefs tend to exist alongside the dominant religion, like, and they tend to integrate themselves into the religion. So like we have many practices like even in pennsylvania like the pa dutch there are many practices among the pa dutch that i would that are definitely like folk magic nope that are not christian at all nope only the internet and media but they would consider it to be christian because they don't get their religion from the translated works of penguin publishing they just get their religion from living life and being around and, and doing the things like you can't read your way into some of this stuff. You just kind of have to be there. And I know he, he went to a couple of roadside attractions. <laughs> I know he he talked to some people, but like this book fundamentally misunderstands religion and belief and worship. I, I honestly think that the more I get to the more I get through it and the more I look at it now as an older, much more well-read person on these topics. So anyway, all right, let's have us a war. Laura stabs Loki and shadow comes back and he's like, Hey guys, Hey guys, war's off. (laughs) Only one who would, only one who would benefit from this is Odin. That guy sucks. Did you know he was my dad and I can do magic now. What? Like like real magic, not my collection. I figured, I figured it out. Is that what being whole is? I, I, <laughs> a lot of shit happened when I was back there. I think I fucked a cat. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, uh, I have a lot um, of questions, but I don't think you have any answers. It's not that kind. Of, it's not an answer book. Yeah, you know the problem with mystery box storytelling is like if you just keep doing the mystery box until the end, no one leaves satisfied. Well, what if I answered one mystery for you? They don't fight, by the way. Yeah, um, obviously you fucking ruin that. Oh, but Laura does ask Shadow to take the coin back from her, and he does, and she dies. And then it, presumably he does not bury her again. He just turns and walks away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> Everybody gets exactly one. <laughs> so Spider Man. Well, Shadow saw Ganesha. Ganesha was doing a coin trick for him or something. (laughs) These fucking coin tricks are all over the book and I don't care. I don't give a fuck about your weird obsession. And, and he, he remembers a dream where Ganesha told him to look in the trunk 
And then it all clicks for Shadow. You remember that junker they put on the ice? Oh, the child is in there. The child's in the trunk. And you know how every year, every year they have the raffle where they wait to see if the car sinks? Every one of those trunks has a dead body in it. Who could it be who is doing this? So Shadow falls through the ice when he's looking in the trunk. And he's going to die. But then Heinzelman saves him. Is it Chad Mulligan that's doing this, Ben? So Heinzelman saves him. No, he's a Chad. (laughs) All right, Heinzelman saves him. The virgin Heinzelman and the Chad Mulligan. (laughs) (laughs) So, So Heinzelman saves him. And Shadow's like, so you're just killing kids every year. He's like, yeah, I'm a god. Turns out. That guy in the book who looked exactly like me, that's me. You know, like every story you've ever read. Can't we worship a God that doesn't require sacrifice and just has power that he gives to us? I want to worship that God. Can't we worship a God that just gives us power? No, you got to kill kids. That's what it's all about. Okay. The power, the power is in the blood. Don't be an idiot worshiping a God doesn't kill kids. So, uh, shadows like no blood here. They fall through the ice. Well, (laughs) I mean, there was some blood. Did he bleed Uh, them first? I don't know. Maybe I'm kind of vague on that point. So anyway, Shadow decides like he thinks about killing him, but he's like, but no one ever finds it weird that like every year a kid goes missing around the same time. Well, so Heinzelman has kind of a that's part of his like aura. Oh, so this is like that God that no one remembers and, and we just don't remember that. Who? Yeah, exactly. I don't even know what I was just talking about. I think we're talking about Heinzelman. Yeah, so Heinzelman, uh, Shadow's like, well, I don't like you, Heinzelman. But damn it, I respect you. But <laughs> I respect your child murdering ways. And I'm going to leave. And that's a third red flag for Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of the game now, Shadow. I'm sorry. You, you got three. You've been ejected. Uh, that's not how that works, Nate. I hope you know that. I don't. Uh, this is a new rule. <laughs> I'm, I'm worshiping a new game, Ben. And that game is now in existence because of my worship. Okay. (laughs) I think you're thinking of three strikes you're out from baseball, but a red card from soccer, but that's okay. Maybe it's gold cards from, from soccer. Is that a a yellow card is a a yellow card is a warning. Okay. So you get three of those and you're done. Is that, I feel like it's two, but I don't remember people from the old country. Please let us know (laughs) uh, how the God of soccer works. Or I believe you call it football. And uh, so, you know who did here? You know who did? You know who overheard this conversation, though? Uh, it. Let me see. It's either going to be Marguerite or Chad because they're the only... Or Sam. Or his, or his friend's wife. One of those four people. They're the only named characters that are there. Chad Mulligan. Oh, my lover. God. And wouldn't you know he's the only one with a gun? And gods are not their their weakness is bullets. Yep. <laughs> As we established with Odin, if you shoot a god, it doesn't matter how many children get sacrificed; they're dead. That's why the god of guns is doing very well. He was smart. He was one of the founding fathers. He snuck that Second Amendment in, and like a a, a century later, he got on the Supreme Court. Smart. Maybe Odin should have done that. Dumbass. <laughs> Chad shoots Heinzelman and Chad is like almost suicidal. He's guilty to the point of suicide. And Shadow thinks that maybe like, oh, maybe Heinzelman had some like final spell or something. So Shadow uses his magical powers to take Heinzelman's memory of the event away. You mean Chad's memory? Because Heinzelman doesn't have oh, memories yeah. anymore. No, you're right. Yeah, Chad. His memory. Me- his memory unit is all over the place. And then, um, yeah, 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 yeah. See, um, so is there a purpose to him losing his memory? Because you could have just not have had that if they're just going to magic it away. Well, Heinzelman's still dead, and now Chad's not going to kill himself. Yeah, but I mean, like, did Heinzelman need to have a final spell? Well, he didn't know somebody was going to magic it away. So Shadow goes to Iceland. Why? To meet another odin why closure why 
<laughs> why aren't we gonna get another odin in america at some point you give it you give this another six years those marvel movies are gonna start cranking out oh and those house true fucks are coming there's literal odin worshipers here i don't think they're hanging anyone though i hope not for a lack of want i'm sure so uh, shadow gives odin the other odin's glass eye and he's like i hate you dad but i respect you <laughs> what is wrong with you shadow fuck off god damn it uh no they do like he yells at him he's like yeah you know uh, he blames that guy for the other odin and he's like well you know like i i was him but he wasn't me i'm 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 iceland odin yeah not America, i'm iceland odin. odin i'm i'm iceland odin i'm chill <laughs> and then the book we ends. named it iceland because we didn't want you to come here and ruin our island rubric <laughs> wait that was it that's the end that's the fuck oh my fucking god is that's the epilogue or... my friend what yeah you can go read it if you don't believe no me, i don't want to i don't want to <laughs> read it i'm done i'm done with this fucking book i think uh i think this is gonna take biggest disappointment in the wobby <laughs> <laughs> is it would you rather have loved it i would rather have somethinged it this i don't know can we count bonus episodes because i've got one in mind that might be more disappointing <laughs> okay rubric blog dot words about books dot so i want you to know prior to reading this again in light of the new allegations i would have given this four out of five stars so let's see what i give it now great I'm I'm going to generously give him a two, probably. Content and ideas, Ben. Uh, so I really thought I was going to be at a four for this, but upon reread, I'm at a three. I think yeah. there, I, I do think there is something to be said for the, the appropriation argument. I think America is not quite right. The Norse mythology is not quite right. The Native American beliefs aren't quite right. And it's just kind of a smashing together of these with a with a clever turn of phrase. And I think it's troubling that everybody seems to remember liking the vibe of this book, but not knowing anything about any of the specifics. Yeah. No, I would say there definitely was a lot of room to develop all these ideas they never developed. What the fuck is backstage? Why is it called that? I don't know. I definitely think Neil Gaiman is like the the main thing I've got from rereading this in light of the allegations. And and I say the allegations like, you know, uh, whether or not anything illegal happened, just the mere fact that he had these relationships is enough to make me look at him in a different light. He admits that he has them. He argues everything was consensual. The The allegations are that it was not. Uh, or that not everything was. And I got to be honest with you, just the fact that he, he had these relationships, he doesn't seem to understand power imbalances. He seems to think that young women are honestly attracted to his wrinkly ass. I, <laughs> this guy is so fucking full of himself. It, it, it's, it's hard not to see that now. It's hard not to see him writing these things and thinking, damn, that's the smartest thing anyone's ever said. And it means absolutely nothing. And I, so I really think he thinks, you know, if you don't, I don't need to tell you what the backstage is. You should just get it. And, if, and it's like, if you pressed him on it, he doesn't fucking know either, but he thinks it's deep. There's something deep about it though. Like it rings true though. Doesn't it? Like the backstage seems was that? Like theater kids. It seems like something that should be there, <laughs> but it's not organization. This is, this is pacing. The pacing is Two. probably going to be the main thing. I'm with you actually to uh this, the this whole of part two is a fucking side story it doesn't get the whole thing is a side story it's nothing but side stories all right use of language you're one saving grace you can say pretty words you get a fucking four congratulations i went up to a five i actually think he's he is 
when I say like the like the the definition for a five is the author exhibits a strong command of language, word choices, especially satisfying or resonant. This is an a highly quotable book. You could pull a lot of sentences out of this and it would read like poetry. But again, when when all these pretty words are then put together into a narrative, a long, long, long form narrative, <laughs> they fail. Personal preference two. Disliked it, but I can understand its appeal to others. You know, I'm I'm gonna go with a three. Um, I would have said prior to this uh, a four or a five. There's a combination of things going on here that make it a three for me. One is obviously I've kind of lost respect for the author. A second thing is that upon a reread, I just find it really lacking in meaning. And a third thing is, as I come to this book much more knowledgeable about myth and folklore and legend and particularly the Norse myths, I find it really disappointing. I find he does a, um, he takes things he likes and he makes them his own. He strips them of the things he doesn't like. And then he turns that around on people. Like he, America is a bad place for gods. Why? Because we take the gods, we strip, we strip them of all their old meaning. We make them American. I, I forgot to tell you at one point, Odin, Iceland Odin says that maybe the reason Wednesday got so screwed up is because he lost so much worship or the idea of him changed and became perverted and, and he became a distorted like funhouse mirror of what he should have been like. Nobody does that more than you. Like nobody gets Odin wrong with as much authority and intent as, as you do Neil Gaiman you have attributed many, many qualities to this that I can see where you get them, but it is fan fiction. This is not in the myths. This is not in the prose or poetic edda. And you don't clearly separate your fiction from your fact. And I do think that is a problem. And I do understand at least some of where that one guy was coming from when he said, you know, this guy's kind of a culture vulture. Recommendation strength. Uh, three? Yeah, I think I'm, I'd go with a three. I mean, if you come to it the way I came to it when I first read it, you will like it. And, and I mean, this is a beloved book. There's something here. I would have said it was a strong recommendation to fantasy fans before this, but I, I really just think it's not the best. I, I think there's just too much lacking. I think... I, I think there's too much out there better for people who want this sort of thing. And I do think there's a little bit of a caveat there of like now, uh, it, am I going to enthusiastically recommend Neil Gaiman ever again? <laughs> like, I, you know, you know what though? That's a lie. Cause I would still enthusiastically recommend Sandman. I still genuinely think Sandman is one of the best graphic novels I've ever read. But American Gods just ain't there. Uh, so let's see how we did. I did a little better than you. Yeah. Six out of ten. He got 49 points. That's a two. He got 60 points from me. So I would say that's a solid three. I think three is probably a comfortable rating for me. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bereft of value. I think a lot of the scenes I would have given him the benefit of the doubt for definitely do seem like red flags now. Um, I think there's, there's a lot of ego here, a lot of self-importance and a lot of self-indulgence, but also a lot of competence. I, I think he is a good writer and that is worth quite a lot when you're talking about a novel so i'm comfortable with a three and i'm comfortable with not reading the book any further well this has been a words about books discussion of american gods by neil gaiman audible hopes you have enjoyed this program i'd like to thank our patrons uh spooky shy shy with the y over on tiktok jamie the gravy man maybe you can tell me if this TV show adaptation was good over on your blog. If you want the gravy where you are reviewing uh, television programs and 
sodas and cookies and not books. And then Never John books. Bierce, actual author John Bierce, uh, author of The Mage Errant, The Rack, and an upcoming new project. And of course, last but not least, Isekai Sensei Sama of the That Time I Got Reincarnated in the Same World as an Anime Podcaster podcast. You can check out his podcast anywhere you can find podcasts. <laughs>